It made me feel like we weren't in a first world country anymore. It was a, a bit panicky. I can go without a meal and my husband can go without a meal and as adults we understand, but my four-year-old doesn't understand that. I just thought, well, that's crazy. How could meat, when we see it everywhere around us, be unavailable? I couldn't find things like flour, baking soda, yeast, sweet potatoes, green chilies, meats and vegetables, mac and cheese. <laughs> it was watching everything disappear off the shelves. Your biggest fear is everyone's going to go hungry. You know, COVID has highlighted issues that have been there. These problems and, and challenges, realities in, in our food infrastructure, um, you have been there. I was very surprised at the things that weren't in the grocery store. I noticed that there was a lack of a lot of different options and varieties. I found it to be pretty stressful when I would go to the stores because we've got certain staples that my family loves and we're used to having around the house. I would have to go to about six different stores, if not more, to find one ingredient. Something as simple as mac and cheese wasn't there because it is shelf-stable. Everybody's thinking the same thing. We'll admit, just like any other grocery store, we had a lot of blank space on our shelves. It took longer for us to get the usual things, and we still haven't gotten some of them. We had uh, real challenges getting meat um, into our food bank. And a lot of that is because even though the meat is cultivated here, they have to ship it out of state for processing. Uh, we've really discovered a pretty serious bottleneck at the processor level. You know, the, the packers are doing what they can. But, you know, there's no doubt that we see that there's a real serious bottleneck there in getting the meat from the farmers, ranchers, and feedlots onto consumers' plates. The more we uh, give away the uh, power and responsibility um, into fewer and fewer hands, you know, the more we're concentrating risk. And so COVID illustrated, for example, illness of you know, meat processing workers and you know, the failure of a large distribution system to get animals from farm to processing to people. Any disruption is gonna have a ripple effect all the way down that food chain. Um, since something, since a product passes through so many hands, there's that many points on the food chain where uh, something could completely fall apart. I saw a lot of really, you know, kind of sad things where um, uh, animals were being euthanized and, and wasted, and while at the same time there were people looking for meat products. Hearing of people who have to dispose of their crops or of their livestock is absolutely heartbreaking as a farmer because you pour your heart into making these crops and it's your livelihood. It's a hardship not only from a financial aspect from a, but from a, a mental and personal aspect. It's a good life, we love it, but some of that stuff gets a little bit hard to deal with. If you're too concentrated in supply of any given product that you need and something happens like a pandemic or anything um, that disrupts that then you have to look for alternatives. COVID helped illustrate well you know you put all your eggs in one basket if there's failure um, it, it might be a widespread failure and it's going to affect a lot of people. It puts us in a position of vulnerability a community that cannot feed its people is at the mercy of whoever can. There is value in having products not quite so 
um, consolidated into few hands and few places. Anytime you have alternatives, um, you are a lot more resilient. If I were to embody 2J's mentality towards shortening the supply chain, I think it would be to diversifying the ways that we get our food. I think a key to the whole production bottleneck is being able to process uh, beef locally. Shortening the food chain would ensure that foods that are local to us are more available as they should be. I think when the supply chain is shorter, you get fresher food, you get more local food, you're helping your local communities and your state. The thing that I really like about having a short supply chain is that all of the money is kept locally. We've been part of a phenomenon where there are people that are starting farms. You know, it is satisfying to have that direct relationship with the people who eat what you grow. It's a way to ensure that our community can keep afloat through difficult times. There's a sea change there and everybody is participating in that local supply chain. Then it's a level playing field and the economy and prices and that sort of thing adjust. You should demand and accept the responsibility of paying closer attention um, and to engaging more in you know, how we as citizens um, uh, create and operate economies um, and maybe particularly with food. Food security matters for us. Food security matters for our future. Food security matters for Montana. Support local farmers, ranchers, and food processors. Contact your legislator and tell them food security matters. Tell others. Tell others. Tell others. Tell others about the importance of food security.